Hello guys, this is Panzermeister36. Today's video is going to be looking at how to create a winter whitewash field applied camouflage effect. This presents a very interesting weathering opportunity because these camouflages were very rarely applied to a high standard. Generally they were applied with, you know, like a rag or a paintbrush. They were always really, really messy. So we're going to be looking at how to make that here today. The technique I'm going to be demonstrating in this video is something I've done actually on a couple tanks very recently, but I haven't had the opportunity to cover it in a video until now. Recently I actually did that T40 light tank, last week's video where I did the pin wash on it, and people were asking me how I did the whitewash effect on that vehicle. So today we're going to be taking a step back and looking at how I did the whitewash effect on that T40 light tank before we did the pin wash. I'll start the tutorial off by giving you guys a little bit of a rundown on the products I'm going to be using and the reasons why I'm choosing the certain products, the certain brands and types of paints. And then I'll give you guys a little bit of a demonstration about how I create the effect. There's two main steps we're gonna look at. First of all is hairspray chipping to give us some nice wear and tear effects to make it look like it's been worn down. And then after that, we're gonna go in with some washable white paint product and create the messy, uneven field applied effect. So let's get started. The first important product we're going to need is some chipping medium. I'm just going to be using hairspray. This is Tracemate Ultra Ultrafine Mist Firm Control. You could also use chipping fluid, but honestly it's just more work, more money, and the results aren't as good. I've done a video in the past, which I'll link up in the top right corner here, where I compared the chipping results of hairspray and chipping fluid. And basically, as you can see on this Panzer 3 here, chipping fluid gave me a lot larger and less in-scale chips, while on this Stoke 3 Schurzen here in the top right corner, you can see much, much finer chips that I got using hairspray. Another tool we're going to need is an airbrush. This is a key for the hairspray chipping effect. For the whitewash paint, we're going to use Tamiya XF2 Flat White for the base and Tamiya Acrylic Thinner to thin it down. The airbrush I'm going to be using is this trusty, rugged Badger 105 Patriot. This is an excellent airbrush. I love it so much. So if you're in the market for a intermediate, beginner level, double action airbrush, this is an excellent choice. Now back to the Tamiya paint. We're using that because other types of paint, the ones in this style of bottles you can see on the right there, those are water based, latex based, polyurethane based uh, paint. They, they basically don't chip as easily in smaller effects. You want an alcohol based paint like Tamiya, which is why we're thinning it with this thinner here, which is basically rubbing alcohol. So in the same way as choosing hairspray over chipping fluid, choosing Tamiya paint over other options is just another easy way to make sure your chipping effects are going to stay nice and fine. It's not necessary, but it's recommended. The next product we're going to need is this AK751 washable white paint. Now if you don't have an airbrush for hairspray chipping, you can just use this and do only basically the second half of the technique. We'll look at that a little bit later. I also think MIG Ammo releases essentially the same product under their own line, so that's another good option. We're also going to need a small brush and some water for the blending of that effect. As I mentioned previously, this is going to be the step that involves making the whitewash paint look kind of messy and field applied, and this is all done by brush, so if you don't have an airbrush, you can still do this step and create some nice effects. I also want to briefly discuss layering. Now this is our subject here in the video. This is a little T34 Sonoff barrel. It's a weathering mule for me, but it's a good example here. I've painted it with lightened XF65, which is as I did on the T40. And I've actually already given it some chipping effects as well as a pin wash. Now the pin wash was just to test a new product I had, but I would at least recommend that you do base color chipping effects before you apply the white wash. Now the reason for that is that you want some realistic layering effects. And for example, the tank could have served for a couple of months or weeks before it was actually given the whitewash effect. So by applying chipping beforehand and having the whitewash over top of it, you can get some very realistic layering effects as you can see on the Stoke 3 here. Hopefully you guys aren't too bored by now, but we're actually going to get started with the tutorial. So first step is to make sure you've got the hairspray shaken up nicely. Then we're going to start to apply it to the tank. My spray distance is usually about the length of the can. That's always good. And then basically you just apply, as I say, two thin misty coats. You don't want to apply too much because you're going to get big chips. Just two light thin coats until you get that nice kind of semi-gloss sheen as you can see here. We're going to put that aside to dry for a couple minutes while we just mix up our paint. 
as I said before, we're going to use XF2 flat white by Tamiya. And as my usual thing, I'm just going to pour a little bit of my paint cup. And then we're going to thin it about 60-70% with thinner. Mix it up nicely until it's flowing well. It's always good to test spray a little bit before you actually start painting on the model so you don't make a mistake like I do right here. And apply a little bit too much. But um, the whole effect I'm doing here is kind of supposed to be uneven and messy. We're going for the field applied look, remember? So the way you can apply this, you can just give it an overall thin coat. I'm trying to be a little bit kind of fancy here so you can see I'm outlining certain effects where I'm thinking the paint should kind of be collecting a little bit more when it was applied and kind of ran down the sides. You can also go for some kind of vertical streaking effects. You can start those now even though we're going to do them later with the acrylic paint. And what I usually prefer to do is kind of make some kind of squiggly modely lines here. Once again, we're also going to be modifying that later with the washable white acrylic paint, but the whole point is just to basically make an uneven, kind of messy effect that we're going to chip, and then we're going to improve it later with some other effects. This is just the base. And here's the result here. As you can see, I didn't apply too heavy of a coat. I didn't cover it all, otherwise it's a little bit too hard to chip. Make sure there's still some base color showing through. People always ask me how long I leave it to dry before I start to chip it. So basically, I go clean my airbrush, and then I come back. So time right now, 11.19 p.m. About five minutes later, I've cleaned up my airbrush, nice and clean, and now we're just gonna start chipping. It's pretty quick. So the chipping procedure is pretty basic. I'm using a big soft brush here, a little bit of water, a little bit of water, and then you basically start to rub at the edges, and then the chips will magically start to form. It's not actually magic. What's really happening is the w water is soaking through the top layer of paint, in this case the white. It's encountering the hairspray that we applied over top of the green, and then it dissolves the hairspray. The water dissolves the hairspray, which then removes the top layer of white paint, exposing the green underneath. Now you can do this with any paint. You can do this with like red primer underneath and the top color, but here I'm showing you with hairspray chipping and the whitewash, which is probably the most common way to use it make sure you only have a little bit of water on that brush. If you want to make some scratches, a toothpick is actually a really, really good tool for this. You don't want to use anything metal because it's going to be too sharp, but just doing a little bit of damage with a little wooden tool like this, like a shish kebab stick or a toothpick, you can kind of start some scrapes. I like to do it like this. I start some scrapes with that, and then I lightly rub over them with a small brush, and then the chips kind of will start to form from those scrapes, but it'll kind of keep the scrapes intact. It's a kind of cool way to kind of control where the chips are going to form. And really this is actually as easy as it looks. You just basically start rubbing at it with a little bit of water on your brush. A little bit of water, not too much, a little bit. And then it just basically chips. It's pretty easy and it looks great. Now the results are, they look pretty nice, but the issue is we have some cool chipping but it doesn't look like it's been field applied. It looks like it's been sprayed on, which it has been. These field applied camouflages, the white washes, were not sprayed on generally. They were usually applied very messily with a brush or a rag or something like that. So we gotta make this look crappier than it is right now. And the key to that is the AK or MIG washable white paint. So I waited about a day for the hairspray to dry completely so it wasn't gonna have any problems here. And then I basically just start to kind of make a mess, you would say. It's, it's kind of ugly at first, but it, it looks better once it's done. So I kind of imagine just the crazy squiggles and stuff that the crew would use when they're just kind of slopping on the white paint. And I just basically make the random patterns myself. It might look like it's kind of hard what I'm doing, but honestly, you're trying to make it look random. So just don't really think about it and just make it random and it'll look good. The only thing I'm being careful about is to not apply this over top of the areas that we got those nice kind of edges to the hairspray chipping. We want to keep those edges and just make kind of the flat areas in the middle of the hairspray chipped areas look a little bit more messy. So here's our result here. As you can see, it's kind of squiggly and it's a little bit too much though. And also the blobs, they look kind of like blobs. They need to be blended out a little bit more so they kind of mesh with the hairspray chipping. So for that, just use a little bit of water. The AK washable white paint is a little bit special because unlike most acrylic paints, you can actually reactivate it and um, it won't, like it, most acrylic paints, they just dry on there and you can't move them around. 
this stuff after we applied it dries in about 10 minutes and then you get a little bit of water and you can kind of blend it out in the same way you can do uh, blending with oils or enamels and it kind of the way it behaves on the model I like it kind of behaves like a whitewash so once you get a little bit of water on there it doesn't really blend as much as it does reactivate and then kind of smoosh around in a messy whitewashy kind of way so it's really really good for this effect you can also use this for hand applying numbers and stuff to the turret as well in some areas I kind of like to mimic the hairspray chipping with this so as you can see here I'm just kind of rubbing it down to make some almost chipping effects there it's real basic and over here I'm actually using some water on my brush to make some kind of streaky areas where it looks like maybe the water is run down the turret and washed away the, the winter camouflage paint And also it's very important to make sure you get rid of those ugly edges like I'm doing right here. Blend them out really well. Now I grab a little bit of that white paint again, the washable white. I'm going to go back and do a couple little details. So I'm going to make some little streaks here. Uh, kind of like the, the washing streaks I was doing right next to it. These are more like actual paint streaks where when they were applying it maybe it kind of collected and streaked down in big kind of blobs. So think about kind of the edges and stuff where that paint would collect and then run down when they're really pouring it on during the initial application maybe. And if you mess this up, you can always just get a little bit of water on your brush and wipe these streaks away and then just try it again. Now a couple areas at the top here is the last step. I decided to kind of blend the chipping out a little bit, make more of a, a defined edge. So I apply a little bit of the, of the washable white and then immediately just start to kind of rub it down and that just kind of gives us a, a more stark edge to the areas of chipping. This is just kind of a weird artsy thing I did here on the back, but I figured I'd show you guys. And here is our result. Now, I actually was not expecting this to be as messy. I was kind of go for more of the coverage with the hairspray and less coverage with the kind of squeals afterwards making it look messy. But the results, I actually love it. I think this looks like a beautiful Russian messy winter whitewash. It's tricky to make a like a bad camouflage that looks actually like it's realistically bad and not just you were terrible when you applied it. But if you're using a small brush and you can kind of make those chips and stuff in scale, you can definitely make an in scale bad uh, camouflage pattern as we did here. And also by focusing more on the crazy squiggles and stuff like that, the brush applied steps. I think I was helping people out because I got a lot of people asking me about how to do these winter whitewashes without an airbrush. And in that case, I would say just don't bother with the hairspray chipping and just only do the squiggles like I did at the second half because you can do that with the brush you just need the AK or MIG ammo washable white paint product and you just kind of make the squiggles and stuff and I've done that before on this Stoke 3 here I'm showing you right now this one had honestly a little bit of hairspray chipping but then I I didn't like it so I basically just went to town with the brush and then I just made all these squiggles and stuff and it looks really really cool so there's many different types of camouflages you can do you can go for an overall coverage you can go for the squiggles, you can go for anything in between. Really, uh, it just depends on what you're going for. Find a cool reference and base your effects off that. Anyways, I hope you found this helpful in explaining how I did the whitewash on the T40, as you can see right here. That was mostly hairspray chipping with only a little bit of squiggles, but like I said, you can go for kind of whatever, whatever type of whitewash you want to make. I'm going to leave you off here with this old archive footage from when I was applying the, the Wasp of White paint product on this Stoke 3 here in an effort to make uh, the brush applied effect. So as I'm talking, I just want you to notice I'm making kind of like little blocks and squares and kind of curves of a kind of like a thin rectangular shape. So I'm kind of making it look like these are individual brush strokes of when they were applying it on. And then I just keep layering them back and forth over top of each other. And then you, eventually you get like this kind of just messy but cool looking. It's like back and forth all the brush strokes. It looks really, really cool. And like I said before, if you don't have an airbrush and you can't do the hairspray chipping part, you can just go with these brush strokes, layer them back and forth, and you'll end up with a really cool result in the end. So while that's playing in the background, I will say thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please post them on below. I'm always looking forward to help you guys further by answering your questions. And there's also tons of other awesome guys in our community who will be in the comments below answering your questions if you have any. If you have any ideas or requests for future tutorials, also post them on there. I've got lots of ideas, but I could always use some more, I guess. 
a huge thank you to my Patreon and PayPal supporters for the little bit of support every month, which helps me buying the paints and products you see in the videos here. That really helps, and it's much appreciated. If you like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing, giving the video a like, and hitting the bell notification button because I've got another video coming up every week. At least I try, um, and usually it's a weathering tutorial. Next week might be uh, oil weathering on the T40. We'll see how it goes. I'm a little bit busy right now, but I always try my best to give you guys a cool video every week. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. This is Panzermeister36. Happy modeling.